Welcome back to the second part of this discussion and we are one desire uh, bringing you this broadcast. My name is Rob Omol. Uh, to my right is Leli Mandela. Uh, we have Pastor Evans Ocheng and we have Reverend Richard Mwendo and we are here with our father, Bishop Gobanga J.O. Um, who is taking us on this journey and I hope that you really um, milked um, everything that, that, that was there in the first episode. Um, this discussion has, is, is really something that we need to have for this season and this time. And I think that um, if, if, you did, if you missed a bit somewhere here and there, maybe just go back and watch that before you join into this one. And uh, I will ask uh, Pastor Evans to begin for us with a word of prayer before we hand over to our Father. All right, yeah. let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this evening, O oh God, to just say thank you, Jehovah, my God. We thank you, my Father, for this broadcast, my God. Even as we discuss various truths, my Father God, I pray that, Lord, you may be with us, O oh God, be with everyone who is watching this particular broadcast from every part of the world, Jehovah, my Father God, and every time zone, O oh God. How I pray that you may be with us and let your spirit guide us, O oh Lord, in our discussions, my God. We bless you and we honor you, for it is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Yes, welcome, Papa. Thank you so much, uh, Rob, and the rest of uh, the panelists who are here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are continuing with part two of um, an attempt to be able to answer a simple question. What is the true definition and expression of a man? Uh, what is manhood? What does it mean when we make reference to the male gender? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what we had actually started off in part one. And um, one of the things that I've known about a real man is his ability to be able to control his emotions and passions. In other words, a true man does not abuse women. A true man does not abuse children. Mm -hmm. Instead, he will protect them. Because men are by nature protectors. Mm -hmm. A man will keep off a woman who's not his wife. I don't know, for those of you who are married, I think you understand that um, you know better. You don't lay your hands on any other woman other than your wife, you know? Because as a man, you are not defined by your exploits, if I may put it carefully, below your waist. Okay? Because you see, as a man, you have a heart. Yeah. You have a head, you have a conscience. Mm. So because of that, you will not try to, um, you know, earn accolades mm -hmm. or get credentials because of your expertise below your waist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people are getting what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. You have the ability to tame your passions. Yes. So I don't know, maybe uh, you guys, given that uh, you're married, yeah, you are all married, mm. very, very married, mm. with one wife, I believe, mm. at the last time I checked, because uh, if, if your status has changed, I don't know, but, uh, but the last time I checked, you are all husbands of one wife, okay? Of course, um, Pastor Evans, we know that uh, very soon you're going to to get married. So my assumption is um, your wife to be is your wife for the purposes of this conversation. Mm. Um, and I'm saying that with the understanding that 
there is not any other person you're hitting uh, he hitting at or else um, <laughs> uh, we will not preside over your wedding <laughs> so that is something that i understand and then of course um for Richie, Lily and Rob not only are you married you have children so i don't know what has been your experience as a man as a father to your kids mm. you know um do you abuse them do you protect them probably you can uh, speak from your own personal experience mm. all right what is your understanding as a, as a married man as someone who's dated how have you been able to handle your passions or have they not been tamed and if so why I don't know whether we need to do a deliverance service here <laughs> in the full full glare of the cameras mm. you know just tell us yeah. mm. I think going fast um there's a word you have used and that is abuse um a preacher in the body of Christ who is no longer with us here within the earth realm that means he passed on said that abuse is a major of two core english words which is the absence of the knowledge of use so absence and use when you look at that specific word used in the introduction of today's engagement you realize that people abuse what they lack the knowledge of the purpose or the use of matter mm-hmm. now bishop here is a preacher of Christ the purpose of God that is his revelation of Christ and to anchor this conversation when we think of the corporate man or the conjoined reality of both the male the female or the multifarious identities found within the corporate man a key component that should guide our understanding of this engagement is purpose. Mm-hmm. Abuse comes because someone lacks an understanding mm-hmm. of the purpose mm-hmm. of a matter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Abuse is not what society defines as abuse mm-hmm. because you find that matters that were def- what that were meant to be corrective have now been redefined within society as abuse. And it is so to ensure that the coming generation lacks the corrective hand, the firm hand of correction from the former generation. Because if you define what is intended as corrective, as abusive, you completely sever that generation from the capacity to become. And what is the capacity capacity to become? It is the purpose, the ability to attain to the purpose of God mm-hmm. within a generation. So, abuse can be easily defined as the absence of use or the lack of understanding concerning the purpose of a matter now honing into the question the male expression of man was designed with a specific purpose mm-hmm. within society specifically within his family unit he was defined with a specific purpose for his spouse he was defined with a specific specific purpose for his children and he was defined with a specific purpose for his society a man of the male expression or the male gender that is disconnected from the purpose that he was defined with and created with is an abusive man Mm-hmm. The problem with society right now is that we celebrate abusive men because society defined success to us in a certain way mm-hmm. and shape and form. Mm-hmm. As a man now bringing it to myself, I have to be married with the purpose of God. Mm-hmm. For me to understand the purpose I serve to my wife and to my child mm-hmm. and to the greater society. Mm-hmm. And that marriage to the purpose of God comes at a price. And that price is my selfish ambition, my selfish desires, and what Bishop mentioned, the passions that I entertain. If I am not married to the purpose of God, that means I feed my passions. 
Yeah. yeah. But if you're married to the purpose of God, it comes at the cost of your selfish passions. Yeah. So the only way I can tame my passions is if I am completely married to the purpose of God. Mm -hmm. If I completely decrease so that God's purpose can take preeminence. Mm -hmm. Are there times where I fail to be married to the purpose of God? Yes, there are times where I fail to be married to the purpose of God. But what is my anchor? My anchor is... If I am disconnected to the purpose, then my passions thrive. If I am committed to the purpose, then my passions fade. So much so that even as Christ said in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but yours be done. That's how, Bishop, I can maybe kick off the conversation. Okay, thank you so much, um, Richie. Um, you've talked about being married to the purpose of God, but now I'm just trying to think aloud more so to those men out there who are not believers and who have a propensity to feel that anything that does not make reference anything that does anything that does not derive its origin from themselves it kind of diminishes their self-worth because now i'm just trying to wonder when we tell people that you should be married to the purpose of God, you know, the feeling is they become a slave. Mm -hmm. And you know, men by nature, especially even those who are in Christ, they tend to segment uh, God's purpose as being separate from themselves. God is a segment that is apart from themselves to the degree that, you know, um, they are able to continue on with their lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to purpose, it's a good idea, uh -huh. but so long as that purpose serves them at the expense of the purpose of God. So I don't know how do we address to these people, because a lot of people tend to feel like um, the whole idea of, God, of, of the existence of God and his purpose, it kind of makes them feel like they are more of slaves rather than people can think for themselves. Mm. So what do we tell such people? Um, uh, let me attempt to answer. Um, <laughs> you, you can only be interested in God's purpose if you are interested in having a relationship with God. Mm. So it starts at the point of uh, uh, what is your understanding of having a relationship with God? Uh, what is the uh, idea of having a relationship with God? Most people, uh, to them, God has been defined as, you know, that person is a, a big stick <laughs> that is coming to get me at the end of the day. So they don't want a relationship with uh, God on that purpose. So you are like, that's why it's easy to segment God from who you are. Because you're like, uh, I am not really, so long as I'm alive, I'm not really... <laughs> abuse somebody or something at the end of the day uh, I'm being a good person I'm not going to be gotten by that person in the big stick but we forget that uh, or the idea is not communicated that God out of the splendor of his love uh, uh, wants to have a relationship with us just because he wants to have a relationship with that with us it's the same way you have a relationship with your friend. You do not have a relationship with your friend because uh, you want to get some, something out of him. You just have a relationship with a friend because he wants to have a relationship with you. But I think, uh, yeah, you're right, Lily. Um, you've talked about having a relationship with God, but the question is, do men really know what it means? Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm not just talking about men out there, yeah. even in church. Mm -hmm. Do men really know what it means to have a relationship? Not just with God, but just the word relationship. Because um, looking at most people that I've dealt with in uh, my pastoral uh, service, I've come to realize people don't even know what is the definition of the word relationship yes. leave alone the dictionary definition yeah. Yeah. because if i asked you for the definition of relationship you'll basically consult this dictionary which is here mm. 
okay, or any of these dictionaries here, you know. But the truth is, relationship is much more than what the dictionary says. Yes. Relationship is not an idea. Mm -hmm. Relationship is a reality. Yes. Yeah. It is a reality that you touch base out of having a personal experience with Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you see, that experience is what ushers you to reality. Yeah. But most people, they see it the other way around. Mm -hmm. And even their own understanding of, re of, of, of reality and, and, and experience is very, very different. And then the other thing that comes to my mind as you were talking, the reason why people see God as one who has a big stick is because of how they grew up in their families. Because you know, one thing I've realized is that our fathers, mm. and when I talk about fathers, I'm talking about the African father. Yeah. Our fathers brought us up in an environment where we were cultured not to have a relationship. Mm. Mm -hmm. We were cultured to fear. Yes, yeah. mm. it's true. So that even the word honor and respect when you look at it from a cultural context, it's actually fear. Yeah. Yeah. That when your dad appears, you have to make sure that everything is in, is in its rightful place. Mm. Or else you might end up earning some good spanking. Yeah. That uh, your father only talks to you based on the results yeah. you deliver mm. in school and every other kind of thing, mm. you know? If you never delivered, then as far as your dad is concerned, you're not good. So you're, you are defined based on results. You are defined based on you living your life to please your dad, irrespective as to whether it is at the expense of your aspirations. Like you see, I came from a family where uh, if you wanted to do music, hmm. you were just thick. <laughs> if you wanted to probably uh, pursue drama, or any recreational activity, dad would say, those are for failures. People who go to campus don't go showing their under, you know, their undergarments in the name of swimming because my father believes that those who love swimming just want to show their undergarments. You've heard me say that in church several times. Yeah. In fact, that was a time when I had the word campus in class six. And you know, in our time, a class six never knew the meaning of the word campus. You know, dad used to teach you new words <laughs> in such context whereby he's scolding you or when he's spanking you, that's when he unleashes a new word, you know? So um, if let's say you are the kind of a person who never went through a certain form of um, dealing with God or probably healing, for instance, you perceive God through the prism of your own dad's uh, understanding about uh, relationship. So the relationship is do's and don'ts. Yes. But the question is, is that really relationship? And how do we help people? Or what can we tell those guys out there who still see the whole idea about relating with God through their own fathers? Because you know, it is your father who actually gives you identity. Yeah. And as a priest in the family, and, and, and given that each and every one of you is a priest in your own right, yeah. You're, you, you are supposed to culture your children to come to the place where they are able to understand what relationship is, yeah. mm -hmm. not just with you as a person, but you standing as, um, as a point of contact between themselves and Father God. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's actually really, really... <laughs> It's really, really big because I realized that um, the reason as to why um, people struggle in relationships is actually because of the fact that they're looking to be politically correct. They're looking to, to just be in the good books mm. with, with each other. And um, even in the context of marriage and relationship, I've realized like you look at men getting married nowadays and you realize that a person who you knew for so many years gets married and all of a sudden the man becomes a different person. Mm -hmm. The values that they had, the values that they held so strongly yes. to, uh -huh. they end up forgetting those values. Mm -hmm. They end up not actually having um, a form of stability in themselves to be able to stand for, for God and even for the values that they actually are meant to uphold. Mm -hmm. And you know, these are some of the things that are breaking people's marriages because they, 
I think one of the things that that makes relationship actually work, the the point of relationships actually working, is actually what Scripture says, where um, two can lose can, cannot be able to walk together unless they agree. So if Richie and I are walking together and my values differ from his, then it is kind of ludicrous for me to expect him and I to be able to walk together in agreement. And I think that is the first point of abuse, um, if you really think about it. Because sometimes you look at abuse as, uh, you know, the major things, like uh-huh. you're battering your wife, or you're not treating your wife well, you're not treating your children well. But um, abuse goes as simple as you not understanding the purpose of the relationship, mm. and you not being able to stand for your values. And even in the midst of conflict, it's not a matter of who's right and who's wrong, but it's a place of you revisiting the culture of the relationship. Mm-hmm. What are the what are the foundational aspects? What are the building blocks of that particular relationship? Mm-hmm. What is it that brought you two together? What 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 was it that was in God's heart and mind for you two coming together in a relationship? Yeah. Because that is one of the things that I've seen is even a challenge in the in the church in the body of Christ because people are relating with each other out of the fact that it is convenient. So because this person has A, B, C, D, and they're able to give it to me, then I will relate with them. But you see, in the real sense, it's actually an abuse of the purpose of the relationship because people are forgetting uh, what exactly was in the mind and the heart of God. And now when you look at um, how we relate with God, people are abusing that relationship because purpose is God's idea. Yes, it is. Purpose is not man's idea. Purpose is not something that emanated out of man's philosophy. Mm -hmm. It is something that was God's idea. It was something that he created. Mm. So why is it that as a man, you would want to um, twist God? Because you know nowadays we are all giving tithes, we are doing giving of various wave offerings and fast fruits because we want to arm twist God. We want him to do that which we desire. But we forget that the moment we enter a relationship with God, we are relegating our status, we are relegating our reputation, and we are saying that, God, I want you to be the one to guide me. I want you to be the one to modulate my lifestyle. I want you to be the one to guide me as to how you expect me to even use money. Mm. Because we have been talking about money in church. It's a series that we've been doing. So what is it that was in the heart and mind of God in regards to the relationship that I have with the people who are in my life? Mm. So when I look at even my my girlfriend or my fiancé or, or my wife, for those who are married, I begin to consider on a daily basis the vows that I made when I married this person. I begin to ask myself, what was in the heart and mind of God when I said these vows? What exactly was it that God was trying to actually get me to a place of understanding? Mm -hmm. And that's where you actually begin to think about covenant. Mm -hmm. And the the reason as to why a lot of relationships again are crumbling and a lot of marriages at that are crumbling is because of the fact that people have forsaken the place of covenant. People have forsaken the place of understanding what exactly was in the vows that I have made to this person. What promises have I made to this person? And am I standing firm and being true to the values that I hold as an individual and the culture of the relationship that is in place? Because when you forget the culture of the relationship and then you forget the foundational aspects of the relationship, then the relationship will crumble. And I think that is the reason many men are struggling with um, just being able to understand what relationship is and being able to thrive in those relationships. Because you can easily be in a relationship with someone, but you're not thriving in the relationship. You can be in a relationship with someone, but you're only taking and you're not supplying into the relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me ask this question. We've talked about relationship. We've talked about two people cannot work together except they agree. Yes. In other words, the basis of agreement is values. So now, which comes first, relationship or values? Mm. Is it values that define the relationship? Or is it the relationship that defines values, which is which, looking at it um, both in the biblical context as well as also in the contemporary world, especially now that we are talking about, you know, men, men who are relating with other men, men who are also relating with women. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, those of you who are married, um, what is it that brought you people, what is it that brought you and your then girlfriend, then fiancé, and now wife together. Was it the values you had? Was it the relationship? I want you to speak from from your own personal experience, but of course at the same time considering what what is it that we are able to derive from scripture. Mm-hmm. I think I think for me it's it's the relationship 
the reason I say that is because there are people who um, I still have a relationship with, yet our values um, are not the same. So you'll find that it's it's not it's not a working together kind of relationship, but it's a um, a relationship based on um, respect and and uh, and many other factors. So for you to even actually know somebody's values, um, you have to have a relationship with this person. Um, I see how even God deals with us. He introduces himself to us and then he gives us his purpose. Um, so we see, we see him bringing, coming to us and giving us relationship and instilling his values in us. Um, so even for me, with the relationship that I have with my wife and even this, this man here, um, and I, I would say that it began from a place of relationship first, whereby um, we, we came free uh, conversing with each other, giving to each other, um, just relating with each other. And from that place, we were able to see the values that were springing forth. Even think about, um, it, there's this saying for that, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. The people you have relationship with, you will find that whatever they carry rubs off on you. So the values that they carry begin to rub off on you. And, and that's a principle that is well known. Let so, me ask this question, Rob. Sorry to interject. Yeah. You've talked about relationship. You've talked about values yeah. and purpose. Yeah. Now, if I may zero in on values yeah. and purpose, yeah. which comes first? Which, which, which defines the other? Do we derive values from purpose or do we derive um, purpose from values? How, what, what is the connection? Of course, I'm not saying that only Rob can answer this question. Yeah. Any one of you can, but yeah. of course, uh, yeah. don't lose your line of, of thought. Yeah. But if you still want to respond, it's still okay. Yeah, for, I, I believe it's purpose defines values. Um, because in the way God uh, functions, and even now we as human beings also function, is the the intent and the the purpose for which something is and the reality is is where is what defines everything else that that stems from from it so so like i i like how there's a painter i love um he's called michelangelo um dead years ago <laughs> um michelangelo had this had this uh, notion of before he did anything on a canvas in his mind everything was already already painted which means the purpose for which that painting was for was already done it was already, the intent was already done in his mind so by the time he was painting i would say now the painting is now the values the tools that 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 he uses that are stemming from that purpose. So, yeah, that's how I would answer that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me jump in, maybe by beginning to read a bit of a scripture here. Isaiah 46, I'll be reading from the Amplified Version, from verse 8 through to verse 10. Remember this and take courage. Take it to heart, you rebellious and disloyal people. Mm. Remember carefully, verse 9, the former things which I did from ages past. For I am God and there is no one else. I am God and there is no one like me. Verse 10, declaring the end and the result from the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
and from ancient times the things which have not yet been done, saying, My purpose will be established. Some versions say, My counsel shall stand. And I will do all that pleases within me, rather, all that pleases me and fulfills my purpose. In that regard, Bishop, I believe and I'm persuaded that purpose precedes values. Yeah. Purpose modulates relationship. Mm -hmm. Purpose is the determinant of the flow of nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there are two core natures within the expression of the world we live in today. Whether you have thousands of expressions and thousands of identities, there are two core natures that summarize the expression of, of, uh, of men as the corporate Maja, both male and female, and their numerous identities. And this is light and darkness. Light being the nature that prece proceeds from God, and darkness being a nature that opposes that which proceeds from God. The people that were being addressed here are, are rebellious and disloyal people. These are people within which their society, there was a lot of rebellion. Mm. There was a lot of lack of loyalty, where someone says one thing today and does something different tomorrow, contrary to what was said. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that inconsistency, these people were directed to something. Number one, your values are off. They, are, they can be at best described as rebellious and disloyal. And this is because you carry a nature that is in contrast to the core nature that God intended us to have. And what was that core nature? A core nature that God intended us to have is one that is defined by the purpose. How is it defined? Mm -hmm. Number one, God has already declared everything yeah. from the moment we begin. Mm -hmm. He has established orders, meaning that we are not competing for things, but we are merely manifesting what God has established. Number two, he has said that his intent is what can be established. Nothing else. My purpose mm. shall be established. My counsel shall stand. And number three, he says that there is something called joy or delight that can only be achieved once you do what pleases God. Mm -hmm. yeah. People chase happiness and people get happiness by doing what pleases them. Mm. But you can only get joy and delight by doing what pleases God. So in response to Bishop's question, I am persuaded that purpose precedes values. Mm -hmm. If you understand the purpose, then your nature, the nature, uh, the nature that you have will emanate from the nature of God and it will modulate every relationship. So in other words, because um, you know we are dealing with a God who is spirit, yeah. yes. and um, we are also spirit beings, but we live in the in 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 in, in this in this earthly realm, yes. whereby everything is is physical or or rather physical or ma or physically manifest, if I may put it that way, mm -hmm. and uh, because of the fact that the nature of man is that man is not constantly in that state of uh, of, of, of being in the spirit, yes. we tend to be more uh, solical, if I may put it that way. Um, just trying to, if, if, if you know, try, if, if my understanding of what you're saying, Richie, is anything to go by, mm -hmm. it means that um, it is the purpose of God that attracts two people together, much as people, people may sometimes not be aware. Yes. Let me put it in a simple way. Yeah. Um, what attracted you to your wife Sarah? Yeah. At that time, you didn't see it as purpose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You just yes. had an affinity that you wanted to have a girlfriend, mm -hmm. and uh, the next thing you discovered that it was that both of you are, I don't know that to say compatible or compatible. I don't know what what really applies. Uh -huh. yeah. Because you know those are the, the those are the terms that people use that you know we need to be compatible, yes. we need to be of the same status and so on. And you know because you know God is interesting, He understands the the folly of mankind. So He allows people to 
to try and explain yeah, yeah. something which is spiritual using human lingo. But yes. the truth of the matter is, what is drawing people together is the purpose of God, whether they are conscious of it or not. Mm. And if, it, if, if purpose is what draws people together, then I think it is from the place of purpose that men start relating with each other. Yes. Just as they are now, you know, relating with God. Yes. And in the process of so doing, now that's now when values are established. And my understanding of the, 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 the connection between values, relationship and purpose is mm. that it is the values mm. that we establish as men mm that guard the purpose. Ah, yes. 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 You see? Yeah. Because the same, same purpose that you're talking about needs to be guarded. It yeah. needs to be insulated. Yeah. It needs to be protected. So what yeah. is it that we are going to protect it? It is actually the values. Yeah. You see? Within the construct or the prophetic atmosphere of relationship. Yeah. 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 That's profound. Profound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, a man must be at a place where he controls his emotions mm. and passions. Mm. And that can only be possible if this man understands what purpose is. That yeah. is it, Bishop. That yeah. is it. Yes. When he understands purpose, when he's able to capture purpose, he will always be attracted to fellow man and fellow man, woman, and children because of purpose. You see? And because he loves the purpose for which he is married, the purpose for which he is a dad, the purpose for which he hangs around with fellow men, the purpose for which he has a pastor in his life, there's going to be a perpetual, if I may put it that way, a perpetual... Um, culture mm -hmm. of upholding values mm -hmm. which in and of themselves serve as an insulating factor to safeguard the relationship itself which now becomes that atmosphere or that environment for the purpose of God to thrive and to constantly manifest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by so doing you'll find that that man will not slap his wife yeah. That man will not abuse his children. And for those men who are single, if you understand the purpose of God, you will jealously guard yeah. the virginity of a single woman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? You will guard the innocence of a woman who is single like you because you know very well that the only way you'll be able to actualize purpose to walk in the manifestation of the purpose for which you are created, the purpose for which you exist, and the purpose uh, that enables you and a single woman to be together in a, in a godly relationship is to ensure that you safeguard her virginity as well as also her innocence. Mm. Okay? Because you're not defined by your exploits, you know, below your waist. No. You have a conscious. You have a head, and uh, you also have a heart. Mm. And if you're a man who has a heart, you'll do everything you can in your power to ensure that you protect each and every person. Mm. That is very fundamental for a man, you know? Mm. You know very well that as a man, you have the fear of God in you that enables you to ensure that you follow after the design that God has ordained for true masculinity. Yeah. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. Because a man is only that one who walks humbly with God. Uh -huh. This is a man who is empowered to step up and assume difficult responsibilities mm -hmm. that comes his way. That is what a true man is because men are actually ordained to confront challenges. Mm -hmm. Men don't run away from challenges. Men confront challenges, and how do they confront challenges? By inculcating the principles of God's word yes. in every aspect. Mm -hmm. The only way we wage war is by the applicability of principles. You see, you can quote scriptures yes. mm -hmm. and say, 
that I'm, 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 I shall be the head and not the tail. But the truth is that you've always been a tail, even before you started quoting. And many men have tails mm. Mm? that are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You've been conquered by your own passions. You see? Mm. Because you do not even understand what is God's design for masculinity. You know? You don't understand that. You, I mean, you're a person who does not understand what it means to relate with God and therefore you find yourself being constantly at war with yourself and with fellow men. You're at war with your spouse as well as also your children. You're even at war with your parents. You see? And therefore when challenges come, instead of you being able to confront challenges with wisdom, you end up running away from challenges. And the only thing that motivates your drive is foolishness. You see? Instead of wisdom. So that is what a true man is. So I don't know, what, what would be your concluding remarks even as we end this uh, particular series? I think I can kick it off. I know you've broken the order, but <laughs> <laughs> in order not to be mechanical. <laughs> um, I, I think from what you're saying, Bishop, I'm, I'm just beginning to see how much purpose is a risk. You know, it is... It is a risk to pursue the purpose of God. It is a risk to even be in a relationship. It is a risk to be married. Mm. I don't know whether, like, all of us here have actually counted the cost as men for the vows that we have actually gone ahead to make to the women that we have married because you, you realize that um, there's a lot at stake. You know, marriage is not just about um, just the heebie-jeebies and um, just the fact that I feel a certain way about someone, mm -hmm. but it is it is actually for purpose. Yes. Everything that we do on this world uh, in the context of time and space is actually for purpose. Mm -hmm. And so if you really are a believer um, and if you really are in a relationship with God, then you'll be the type of person who's not afraid to take risks because it is through those risks that actually you'll be able to exercise your faith. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to come into a place where you also mature as a person. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think um, relationships were made to cause people to just be stagnant and to just maintain the status quo. I think provided that you are in a relationship with any particular man, be it your spouse, be it fellow man, be it your pastor, there is a demand on you that has been placed for you to continuously grow and continuously mature into the stature of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so if, if that is not happening, then you need to take a step back and question the reason as to why you're in the relationship. You need to take a step back and question what exactly is was your motive in the first place to enter that particular relationship that you have with that person. Mm -hmm. and I think this is this is really, really challenging because it it brings you to a place where you actually begin to really take stock of the relationships that you have with people. Oh, well, and you begin to take responsibility for the areas where you may have um, taken certain relationships for granted. Hey. I realized even the relationships that we had when you were really, really young, say high school, say university, with the people that we engaged with, God had a unique plan and purpose for them. Yes. But some of us have severed those relationships because I graduated and so we moved on with life. I have my children, I have my wife, and so I'm happy I'm living my life. But we have actually severed those relationships prematurely and there's something that God intended to do through those particular relationships that we had. And so it really puts a high demand on us to really steward the relationships that we have and to go, go back and ask ourselves, how have we handled ourselves within the context of relationship, first with God and then now with each other? Mm, lovely, lovely. Um, anybody else would like to add more weight to this very <laughs> a unique series. <laughs> Lily, you have, Lily, you have something to say? <laughs> no, I, I think uh, you brought it to such... Uh, you brought everything together so clearly. It's very hard to add anything else because at the end of the day, you... Purpose is what makes or breaks relationships. Come on now. Your understanding of purpose is what makes or breaks relationships. So I think that in a nutshell summarizes, you know, a, a lot of what we've been speaking about. Mm. So what defines a man that enables him to express manhood is the purpose of God. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good. <laughs> 
any more ideas <laughs> yeah maybe to conclude on the strength of that what defines man and as far as expression function and relationship is the purpose of god is a scripture here i'm now seeing in a new light ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time he has also planted eternity defined as a sense of divine purpose in the human heart which is to say there is a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except god yet man cannot find out comprehend and grasp what god has done his overall plan from the beginning to the end now i'm speaking to people who perhaps do not identify as believers as christians as people who believe in god understand that there is a certain level of beauty and appropriate engagement with everything that has been created that you cannot access outside of time and season and outside of god who made it mm. and number 2 there is a sense of divine purpose mm-hmm. which you have within your heart that guess what nothing under the sun will ever satisfy mm. now i'm not talking about happiness mm. i'm talking about delight or joy mm-hmm. you will never be able to attain to delight and joy not happiness but delight and joy with anything under the sun mm. it can only be attained to by accessing a divine purpose mm. the problem here is that you cannot lead yourself into that purpose because this verse says you cannot comprehend or grasp what god has done you have to submit to him that he may define to you who he is who his purpose what what his purpose is and who you are according to his purpose that is the only way to attain mm. to delight and joy mm. yeah in other words uh, what richie is saying is that um in as much as you may claim to be a man who is in his early 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 80s. You see, it's not the number of years that you've lived that defines who you are. Mm. It is possible for you to have lived for over 50 years, like I have, but at the end of it all, you have no idea of what has been going on from the time when you were born until now. But a person who understands the purpose of God if i may say this carefully is able to capture even things and have a, a, a grasp of events and um, successions of times and seasons mm. even prior to his birth come on man to the point where by you're even able to know what exactly god has ordained for future generations to come. Mm. In other words, you have the ability to break past those dispensational barriers. Come on. And I can prove that in scripture. David was able to see Christ mm. even before Christ was revealed. Come on. Yeah. It's in scripture. Isaiah the prophet prophesied about the crucifixion of Christ. Right. Isaiah prophesied about the millennial reign of Christ. That's right. Moses also had a grasp of Christ. Same thing to Abraham. Yes. I mean Jesus put it in this way. He said that Abraham so my so my day and he rejoiced. Yes. Meaning Abraham never lived during the time of Christ. So that tells you something that when you are operating in the wavelength of the purpose of God, yes. you'll understand all multifarious dimensions of god because the dimensions of god they are at best grasped and captured and deciphered within the overarching purpose of god hey. not just concerning your life but concerning the existence of the human race mm. so god richly bless you beloved mm. and thank you so much for tuning to this broadcast